Fire up, Surly Talk Sports, back fencing it into a huge week of sport. Already had the Super Bowl on Monday, NRL preseason challenge kicking off tonight. We've got the All Stars game, Warriors on Sunday, Super Rugby preseason, UFC, Breakers last home game, Wellington Phoenix, Test cricket. Strap yourself in, New Zealand. If none of that tickles your fancy, then I certainly can't help you. Add to that off the field as well, Warriors Heritage jersey going crazy this week of course went on sale yesterday she sold out within minutes so hopefully you managed to get your hands on one an absolute work of art 95 throwback shout out to one New Zealand who actually let them get away with no logo no playoff portal on the front instead she just says NZ Warriors truly is a beautiful piece of kit if you didn't get your hands on one though you were one of the unfortunate few then never fear your mate Surly's here going to be running a giveaway with Dynasty for a couple jerseys, a chance to win one for you and a mate. So stay tuned to the Surly Talk Sports Instagram page to see how you can get your hands on that. In terms of a bit of a pre-season update, it's fair to say me chucking out the idea of doing a Bronco with the Mighty Coat. That got the tails wagging. People were firing through asking Surly, mate, how did you go last Thursday? I can report we've done two pre-season trainings and so far not a Bronco inside. It certainly did surprise me. But these nostrils, they can still smell one coming. I think they're trying to lull us into a bit of a false sense of security. So stay tuned. As soon as we bang one out... You'll be the first to know here on the Silly Talk Sports Podcast. Hopefully under five minutes are the best, but we shall see. Fair to say the old knees holding up quite nice on those hard summer fields so far. So positive signs for a big 2024 ahead. Shout out as always to the legends at the TAB. Of course, they're the headline sponsor for the Surly Talk Sports Podcast. Without them, none of this would be possible. If you're not already a TAB customer, make sure you download the app or head along to their website, www.tab. .co.nz to get yourself in the game and have a flutter on all of that sport I just mentioned before. Speaking of partners, it gives me great pleasure to announce that the legends at Better Bear have jumped on board as a segment sponsor for Surly Talk Sports this year. She's a great drop, zero carbs, perfect for pairing with a great game of sports. So get around Better Bear and cheers for them for getting around Surly Talk Sports. The segment is going to be called the Better Bear Battler of the Week. And basically, it's a chance for you to throw your mate under the bus. I'm going to chuck up an Instagram story. You can nominate a friend as the battler. Maybe they've played 80 odd games of rugby, never scored a meaty. Maybe they had a couple too many Darren Froffiers at pre-drinks, didn't make it out to town. This is your chance to name and shame them. We can have a bit of a laugh at their expense and if they're selected as the battler of the week, I'll chuck you some surly merch for your troubles as well. So shout out to the legends at Better Bear. Zero carbs, she's a grouse drop. Perfect for watching the sport. So get around them, an absolute day for it. Quick Super Bowl review before we get into all the footy that is on display. What a game it was. Must say, a bit of an average first half to be fair and I think a lot of casual fans probably tuned out then. It was a little slow. Full credit to the 49ers though. I thought their defence really strangled Paddy Mahomes and they dominated possession on offence as well. Purdy and McCaffrey were putting on a bit of a clinic. Fair to say the most entertaining part of that first stanza was old mate Travis Kelsey pushing his coach Andy Reid that would not fly in the NRL. Imagine Ricky Stewart getting pushed around. It would be Biff's galore. The other part I really enjoyed and shout out to her because I give her plenty of stick but Taylor Swift getting into the action, nicking a couple beverages up in the stands whenever they cut to her on camera. Full credit to her. Second half though, that's where the game really got into its work and what a finish we were treated to. Blow for blow, big play after big play right until overtime. But in the end, if you give the ball to 15 Patrick Mahomes with a chance to win the game then you're well and truly done for Mahomes did what he does with that winning drive turning to his boy Kelsey to get important first downs and just marching the Chiefs down the field to set up the game winner and collect his third ring ranking him right behind Tom Brady in the GOAT chat in my humble opinion be keen to hear when my fellow NFL fans rank him in terms of greatest of all times but you just know if you give him a chance to win the 
game that last minute or so, he's always going to get the job done. I'd love to see some footage of how the lads are tracking at the moment. Winning a Super Bowl in Vegas doesn't get much better than that. Maybe a bit of a body cam on Travis Kelsey or even Jason Kelsey, his brother, who looks like an absolute roost. It was the second highest single event in US TV history behind the moon landing. Tinfoil hatters put them away. We're not quite going to go into the details around that. Did it happen or not? But what a game and what an event overall. Usher with the halftime show, ripped off his singlet, got on the rollerblades, bought out Lil John and Ludacris. What more could you ask for really? And overall, an extremely successful season for the NFL. Money-wise, it's probably bigger than ever with all the Swifties jumping on board too. So that was great to see. So bring on Super Bowl 59. I've got to say that's certainly on my bucket list. Imagine going to a Super Bowl in Vegas, then ripping and tearing the week after that. Would be crazy times. But shout out to the Chiefs. I wrote them off earlier on in the year. But Mahomes and co, too good. They get the job done and win yet another title. Pretty unreal stuff. Right, NRL trials, they get underway tonight with the Bulldogs taking on the Melbourne Storm. Keen as to see Ryan Pappenhausen lace up. He's probably the big event for that clash, but I'm actually just going to focus on two of the games this weekend, which really tick the boxes for me. The first one, of course, is the All-Stars game, and then we'll rip into the Mighty Wars on the Sunday for the All-Stars. Good to see four Warriors lads in the mixer for the Māori side. Unfortunately, few players have been pulling out on both teams. The Indigenous and the Maldives. Cody Walker picked up a bit of a calf niggle, so he's been a late scratching. And Dallin Watini Zelezniak also ruled out. Some big names still in the mixer for both sides, though. If you look at that Indigenous backline, you'd have to say they've got the upper hand there with guys like Latrell Mitchell, The Hammer, and Nico Hines. But if you cast your eyes to the Maldi Ford pack, they've probably got the wood on their opposites there. So it's going to be an interesting battle, two contrasting styles, but I'm keen to to see how this one plays out. These late withdrawals though, they did get me thinking a little on how you could possibly further incentivize the players to try and play these games. If you look back a couple years ago, the lineups were stacked 1-17 to 17 and no one was pulling pin late. I did think maybe they could take a little leaf out of the NFL's book. How they run the Pro Bowl the week before the Super Bowl, of course. No one involved in the Super Bowl plays in the Pro Bowl, so if you did it like this for the NRL, then no one from the Grand Final would be playing in that game, but I think you'd get better buy-in if this game was run later on in the season because Kalen Ponga and co, they're pre under a lot of pressure from their clubs to not pick up injuries in the preseason. So it's just so easy for them to pull pin and save the rig for the NRL competition. I also thought maybe they could look to bring back like the 100 metre sprint, maybe even a bench press competition, a goosey competition, one on one wax. That would be great stuff. Incentivize these players with that lure of bragging rights of saying you're the fastest man, the most powerful, the strongest. You've got the the best footwork in the comp I think the players would buy into that as well which could help take it up to another level but looking forward to this game in Townsville I'm sure it's going to be hot as shit keen to see Joshy Curran rip in for the indigenous and like I said all those Warriors lads in the mixer for the Maoris Speaking of Warriors, lads, of course, Sunday, 4pm, that is when we get the first glimpse of our boys in a trial for 2024. Down in the 03, the beautiful Christchurch, and they're going to be wearing their aqua preseason strip to celebrate as well. To be fair, one of my favourite jerseys that they've trotted out in in a long time. Actually had to cop one myself from the legends at Dynasty. Bloody flattering on the old rig, but really looking forward to this game, and great to see the Tigers. They've bought pretty much a full strip strength side across the ditch. Now a lot of teams, they like to play these trials differently. Some roll out the Rolls Royce, some give the young guns a crack. The Tigers though, you got to remember, they're back-to-back -back wooden spooners. So for them, this preseason challenge, it's almost their Super Bowl. I think a couple years back, they bet the Panthers celebrated that with a standing ovation. So this is where Benji's boys like to really get into their work and try and at least win something for this year. And with the likes of Jareem Buller or Bullivan 
Stefano Uto Kamanu, Upi Corosau, David Klemmer, the board across some big names and certainly looks like their intention is to have a heck of a day. For us, I think we're really flexing our depth here. We've got some big regular first graders in the mix as well as giving some opportunities to a few of the younger lads from New South Wales Cup. Of course, really keen to see RTS first game back in the centres. Going to play a roaming role, touched on that last week, but can't wait to see him back out there. CHT or also returning and with him and Lukey Metcalf they're going to form such an exciting halves combination for this game. Tainto Apiki at the back really like what I've seen from him every chance he's got an opportunity and then also the likes of Kalani going Freddie Lussett guys that have already made their debut and played pretty regular first grade minutes but they get a further opportunity to try and push for that 17 against the Sharkies at Mount Smart. I did want to highlight though a handful of guys five of the best that perhaps Perhaps aren't household names yet. A few young up-and-comers that are scheduled to play in this game that I think Warriors fans should keep an eye out for. The first one, and he's been getting a few raps across the ditch. I've heard guys like Guru and that give him a bit of a pump up. And that is Zion Maiu'u in Jersey 15. He's only 20 years old, 106 kilos. He's a powerful prop, a big body, great running game, good feet, strong skill set. And I've got massive raps on this lad. I think he's going to have a big future. And I think I think he's really going to push for one of those bench middle spots. If he hasn't made his NRL debut by, say, round 12, then I'd be incredibly surprised. I think that 17 jersey has his name written all over it. Speaking of 17 jerseys, the bloke wearing it this week, Leka Halasima. Jeez, he gets me excited. Young second rower, only 18 years old and already a part of our top 30 squad. Loved watching him play for the New South Wales Cup side last year where he did damage at just 17 years old. He's got great ball skills, strong offloader, a good line runner, and he's got a really strong aerial game, whether it's off short kicks or long kicks. He's a great attacking threat. I don't want to over pump him up, but when I think of player comps straight away, a young Jeremiah Nunai comes to mind, and I think he could be a real star for us in the future. Jersey's 22 and 23, the young half combo of Ben Farr and Luke Hansen. Luke Hansen, not from the famous Hansen Umbot family, but geez, he looks every bit a good footballer. He's come across from Penrith and I think he could prove to be a real astute buy from Webby in the years to come. Then we've got Ben Farr who went great for the cup side last year. These two they could be that halves combo moving forward. Two talented young playmakers that I'm excited to see given an opportunity on Sunday Arvo. Ale Leotoa in the centres of course. Massive raps on him already. If you listen to the one take potty, Monty Beetham he was singing his praises and I can't help but agree. Coming in off a massive preseason, had an unreal debut against the Canberra Raiders last year. He's put on some size, but he's still got that amazing skill set. He's nephew of Ali Latiti, so footy is well and truly in his genes. And I think he's going to push Rocco and Adam Pompey for that other centre spot. Looks like Rogers got one locked down, so those three straight shootout. And can't wait to see what Ali dishes up. And then finally, two young boys in the pack, and Tanner Towers Smith who's a 19 year old lock from Christchurch and he gets a chance to trot out on his home turf could be our Tohu Harris replacement long term and then Jacob Laban Jesus here big body only 19 as well a meter 90 and 110 kgs looks every bit the real deal so remember those two names talented lads in the pack that I think will be cornerstones of our 17 for many years to come so there's a couple to circle in your rugby league black book for Sunday game but overall she has a trial so you got to factor that in mind but I think it's a strong squad that Webby has named. I expect us to get the dub as I do every week but overall just can't wait to park up on the couch and see that Warriors emblem back on my TV screen. How good is that going to be? Right into my ladder predictions now and I've had a lot of people that were excited for this because I was really hyping it up last week saying I'm going to run through my 1 to 17. I must say of course these are my pre-season predictions and I'd be keen to hear your guys thoughts as well because there's a lot of contentious spots here. I've actually bracketed them up and this is subject to change as well so I've gone sides 13 to 17, 9 to 12, 4 to 8 and then 1 to 4 and listed the teams that I think will fall into there and a little bit on why in some teams cases so for that bottom bracket 13 to 17 I've got the dogs the raiders the tigers and the dragons 
I think the dogs, although they recruited well, I think they're lacking still a little bit in the middle and I don't really trust that halves pairing so much. I believe they've got a pretty tough draw as well. So I think they'll kind of finish right on that 13 mark. Raiders touched on them last week. They're my biggest fallers for this year. Tigers and Dragons, a battle for the spoon there. And early thoughts probably would be it goes to the Dragons. Then in that 9 to 12 bracket, and this is where it gets really hard for me because I genuinely think that the team finishing in 7th and the team finishing in 12th, there could only be 2 to 4 points, 1 to 2 wins separating them. There's a real log jam here with some teams that I think have recruited well, added some depth and look to be quality football sides. That could be anyone on their day. But in that 9 to 12 bracket, I've got the Titans, the Eels, the Knights, Manly and the Finns. And there's three teams from this bracket, the Eels, the Knights and the Dolphins that play the most games against top four sides this year. A lot of people are probably surprised that I've got the Dolphins in there. I really like the look of their roster. Herbie Farnworth, Flegler, Avarillo, great additions. But for me, it's their lack of depth at 9 and 7. If you could guarantee that Jeremy Marshall King and Sean O'Sullivan would get through this year injury-free, then I'd be well and truly all aboard with them making the top 8. But unfortunately, you can't do that in a competition like the NRL. So I've got them here. The Knights, I see them as big fallers. I don't think they can replicate what they did on the back end of last season. They're just so Ponga dependent. The Eels, I think they're going to be similar to what they were last year. And the Titans, I expect them to improve under Des Hasler, but I have them just missing the eight at the moment. Then in that five to eight bracket, I have the Sharks, the Bunnies, the Cowboys, and the Storm. Initially, I wanted to leave the Sharkies out here because, again, so Nico Hines dependent that if he was to go down with injury, then I think they would be in a world of trouble. But for back-to-back -back years, they've been assisted by the draw. They have the most games played against bottom eight sides from last year with 15 and an NRL high eight of those against bottom four sides as well so they've been given a massive leg up there and I expect them to capitalize on that easy run and cement themselves in that five to eight mark then in the one to fours I've got the Panthers the Warriors the Broncos and the Roosters all four of these sides feature just behind the Sharks for most games against bottom eight teams the Panthers Broncos and the Roosters they have four 14 of them, we have 13. The Panthers, they actually play 19 of their games in New South Wales this year, second only to the Dragons in terms of games in their home state. That must be nice. The Warriors, we have 13 games against bottom eight teams, including six against bottom four sides. We do play the most games out of our state with 13, but you get that with the big jobs being based in New Zealand. It's not all bad though. The lads get the chance to rack up the old frequent flyer miles, upgrades to business class, the old Koru Lounge, it could be worse. So I actually think, Warriors, I've got us in second at the moment, just behind the Panthers, ahead of the Broncos and the Roosters. That top four, she's going to be congested, but when you look at our team on paper, I'm backing us to repeat last year's heroics and go one further. How good. So again, quick summary of that. In the bottom four, I've got the Dragons, Tigers, Raiders, and the Doggies. Next, I've got the Titans, Eels, Knights, Manly, and and fins in no order. I could also see Manly make the shift up into the eight if the Sharks were to have a bad run, but I do have the Sharkies in that five to eight just because of the draw. Alongside them with the Bunnies, couple injury worries, Campbell Graham out for most of the season, and then Munro out for eight weeks, but I still expect them to be a decent football side. Cowboys expect them to be much improved, and then the Storm, and then your top four, Panthers, Warriors, Broncos, Roosters, how good. Again, keen to hear your guys' predictions. You could sway me either way on a lot of those sides that just missed out on the eight. So we'd love to hear your thoughts. Super Rugby, week two of pre-season last week and a couple alarming results, some interesting ones at that. The most alarming being the Landers getting the win 52-19 to over the Hurricanes. It was the first time that we've seen the Swirls in action for 2024 and I guess I wouldn't stress too much. No Cammy Roygaard, old Roids, no TJ Perinata, no Geordie Barrett, no Asafo Amua. So they're big dogs, they weren't in action but the Landers, geez, did they turn it on at the sustained my lunchbox. I don't expect them to be able to sustain that level of success and I do think the Canes will be stronger than them throughout the season. 
But man, did that one catch me out when I saw it on the old results list. I think the most pleasing side through Super Rugby preseason so far, you'd have to give that to the Blues. Two big wins over in Japan, including a 57-pointer against the Cannon Eagles on the weekend. When you look at their roster, there's just so many guys on their team with a bit of a chip on a shoulder. Massive point to prove this year. Kera Ioane, Hoskins Satutu, Caleb Clark, all either not in that World Cup squad or barely getting a chance. Quality footballers, they're going to look to really try and impress Razor. And then under Vern Cotter, at least so far anyway, they look like they're going to play an exciting brand of rugby. Let the old Gilbert fly and play a bit of Razzle Dazzle, which is certainly pleasing to watch. The Chiefs, they look better on the weekend. Big test for them this weekend. Coming up to Auckland to take on the Blues. This is where you expect everyone to be back Rolls Royce lineup, so we'll get a great indication as to how these two sides stack up. For the Crusaders, they wrote their wrongs from the week before and got the win over the Bristol Bears, so shout out to them and welcome back to New Zealand as well. In terms of your games for this week, they're actually all on tomorrow. A full Fizz Fridays featuring four of the best. You've got the Canes taking on the Moana, the Crusaders taking on the Landers, the Blues taking on the Chiefs at Oniwa. Shit location, great game, and the Rebels taking on the drawer. Of course, round one kicks off next Friday. Chiefs taking on the Crusaders. What a lip licker that is going to be to kick off the 2024 season. And I've actually got some great futures bets coming up for you in the punting section towards the end of the potty. Got a bit of a surprise. I don't expect the Crusaders to be in the final, but more on that soon. And then arguably the biggest story in rugby this week, and that came with the great man Kiwi's centre and Roosters centre, Joey Manu announcing that he is off to French footy, or so it seems anyway. Of course, the Roosters, he wants to play fullback there. Tedesco looks like he's going to be sticking around and signing a contract extension, so that won't happen under their watch. Joey, he came out and said he doesn't want to play for any other NRL club. He owes the Roosters everything he's got, and you've got to rate that. It's very rare to find loyalty today in the top end of professional sport. Instead, he's decided to chase the Euro, and I'm sure he'll be getting a handsome payday in return but I'm really excited to see how he goes would have loved to have seen him come back to New Zealand and play for a New Zealand Super Rugby franchise imagine him in the 13 jersey for the Chiefs or the Hurricanes or even the Blues that would have been a great watch by all accounts he was great at high school level that's where the Roosters found him over in Sydney playing high school footy so really excited to see how he goes he's got the complete skill set to be every bit the real deal in rugby and I found it interesting Razor he came out earlier in the week and is really pushing to get this All Blacks eligibility rule changed so that over overseas players are able to be selected. When you look at the names, Richie Mwanga, you got Lester Fainga, Noku, Adi Savia, all applying their trade overseas at the moment. Razor wants them to be able to wear that silver fern on their left tit come international time, and maybe that works out well for Joey Manu. He's already come out and said a childhood dream of his was to be an All Black, so could we see that happen in the next two to three years? I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Interesting to note for the Roosters as well, it appears the French, they're pulling off a bit of a raid on the boys on Bondi at the moment. Angus Crichton looks like he's going to head over to French rugby as well. By all accounts, he was unreal at high school, so I'm sure the Wallabies will be looking out for him. Joey Schmidt will be pushing him to go over there, chase the old pastries and see how he goes. Interesting times for the Roosters, and it is refreshing to see they do actually have a salary cap and they can't just chuck ridiculous amounts of money at these guys. But like I said, it all gets underway next week. Super Rugby Round 1 fizzing for it. It's weird to have a competition kicking off in February. Sun shining, fields are hard as fuck. There's still cricket on our screens, but I welcome it. Can't wait to rip in. And I have a sneaky feeling the old Fiji and Drua, they could be out to break a few hearts this year as well. Can't wait to watch them. Weekly wrap time now and got to kick her off with the GOAT, the great man Tom Abercrombie announcing that he is retiring from basketball and the Breakers after 16 years. What a legend he is, led the team to four titles, he's the Breakers all-time leader in games played, total points, three-pointers made, blocks and 
and steals leads all of those categories. No doubt about it, he's going to have his jersey hung up in the banner amongst the greats, and he's going to be such a big loss to this franchise on the court. Off the court, you'd have to think that he walks straight into some kind of coaching or mentoring role, so I'm sure we'll be seeing plenty of him at Spark Arena. But it's his last home game tomorrow night, so fingers crossed the fans pack it out. It's a must-win game for the boys as well. Cheeky little Westlake Hucker at full time to honour one of the greats from that proud school as well what a place she is but shout out to the legend tom abercrombie whenever you think breakers he's the first player that comes to my mind so sad to see him go and great to see his emotion in the press conference as well this team means so much to him what an absolute legend sticking to basketball of course the nba trade deadline finished at the back end of last week as well so thought i'd do a quick little wrap up there a bit of a 3-2-1 in terms of teams that i think did the best out of that situation in one I had the Knicks winning this, they added Bogdanovich, didn't give much away at all and in doing so they added another elite scorer, someone that can take a bit of the load off Brunson while OG and Randall are out with injury. They're a pretty stacked roster now so you'd have to think come playoff time they will be right in the mix in the Eastern Conference and they'd be a decent bet to win the East as well. So I'm sure Knicks fans were celebrating that one. In second place, I had the Dallas Mavericks, who I think low-key did really nice. They picked up PJ Washington from the Charlotte Hornets, who will be in their starting five. A great attacking threat and a decent defender as well. And then they also picked up Daniel Gafford from the Washington Wizards. Really underrated pickup there. Interested to see who starts once Lively is back, because we know Luca loves him. They've been a great lob combination. But in Gafford, they get an elite defender, loves a block, and he's also great off a lob so well played to Mark Cuban and the Mavericks and then in third I had Philly with that Buddy Heel pick up they got him for so cheap as well had to give bugger all away to the Pacers I was a little surprised they dealt him so cheaply because the Pacers of course they pulled off that Siaka move so it looked like they were chips in instead though they're clearly investing in Pascal, Halle Bird and Turner, Nemhard and some of this younger core that they've got off the bench Buddy he goes to Philly and if in B is able to get back out on the court before or during playoffs they are going to be a massive threat and be no longer eligible for MVP unfortunately due to his injuries and not playing the 65 games under that new rule but if he's able to get out there come the business end he is insane was no doubt the MVP in my books this year and would make a massive difference to this Philly side as they push in a year where they could really take home the chip and then it was after the trade deadline but the late show they picked up Spencer Dinwiddie they were inactive during that trade deadline many were expecting them to go after a DeJounte Murray who I believe is actually on an expiring contract and the Hawks they wanted too much for him they wanted Austin Reeves, Max Christie and a draft pick so fair enough for the Lakers for not going for him you run that risk on that expiring contract that he can just then walk at the end and you've dished away two decent players one good player all just for a three or four month loan but they get Spencer Dinwiddie who I think will be a handy addition to the team off the Remu, adding a bit of spark. So keen to see how that plays out. And then finally for your weekly wrap, UFC 298 going down this weekend Sunday. I think Volk, the main event of course, kicks off around 6.15 on your Sunday night. So strap in for that. It's a great card. You've got Justin Tuffer on it. Then you've got Rob Whitaker as well taking on Costa. That should be a good biff. And then you've got the great man Volk who's been talking Talking it up too. I love that video he released during the week. His opponent, Taporia, he's come out and said Volk's too old. So to take the piss out of that, made a hissing video for his Instagram and YouTube. Just really playing it up. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you head along. She is a bit of a giggle. But I really like Volk to win this fight. Of course, people are writing him off after his last showing. you got to remember, he took that fight on such short notice. Was well and truly out of shape. But he's got no quit on him. Couldn't say no. So took it anyway this fight he's had a full camp I see Izzy's been over there in Sydney with him that's the preparation you need for a big bounce back so I'll be 
backing Alexander the Great, channeling my inner Anzac spirit, and I'll be going for the Australian. I also want Whitaker to win, and then Tuffer, who I know is the underdog. We'll touch more on that soon, but I'd love to see him continue his hot streak and get the win for the Kiwi Samoan contingent over there. That would be big fizz. Should be a great card though, so make sure you strap in. Tuffer's at 305, then you've got Rob Whitaker at 545, and the Volk at 615. UFC Super Sunday. How good. Time to talk some punting now, of course, courtesy of the legends at the TAB, who I must say are probably a bit off me after the Super Bowl. If you took my tips from last week, I was tipping out ticks galore on bet slips. We well and truly cleaned up. It was a great day for the pod, and I know a lot of you jumped on because you were flicking me through your winning slips as well, which was great to see. So this week, we'll look to run it back, and the first aspect I wanted to touch on was those Super Rugby Future bets. Now, this is the last week where you can jump on these Next Friday it gets underway so you have to have placed them before then. I've gone through and picked out four options that really tickle my fancy and I think they could be worth a little bit of an investment. The first one, and I spoke on this before, I do not have the Crusaders making the Super Rugby final this year. They've never won the comp in a year that ends with four, of course 2024 it ends with a four, that is this year, surely you get my drift there, so I have the Chiefs taking on the Blues in the final, you can actually pick that as the exact final, paying $6.25, she's the third most popular option, I think that is massive overs, I believe the trophy's heading north, it's going to be the Battle of the Bombays, winner claims Pocono and also gets the Super Rugby trophy, straight shootout between those two, $6.25, jump on board. Then off the back of that, I actually have the Chiefs to win it at $3.25. Chiefs won the Super Bowl, Chiefs win the Super Rugby, it's just going to happen, I think they were the best team last year, just fell one short in the big dance, they've got a stag squad, have lost guys like Sam Kane, Retallick and co, but they have so much depth, they've still got so much quality across the paddock, and I like them to get the job done at $3.25. In terms of teams to make the semis, because I think there is a bit of value on offer here, I actually have the Drewer to play a semi-final at $3, I think they'll finish in that quarter to final range then pull off an upset there and secure their ticket at three bucks they're playing a few more games in Fiji at home this year they're so hard to beat over there we saw them tip up the Crusaders there last year so I think they advance through to the final four three bucks get amongst it and then a power play and you all know me can't say no to a power play always love a cheeky flutter on one of them gone through and picked out one that really tickles my fancy and that is Will the Thrill Jordan and Mark Talia both top five try scorers in the competition at five dollars Will the Thrill of course he'll be playing fullback for the Crusaders but his support play is just unreal he's always backing up on the inside and I think we're going to see him dotting down underneath the crossbar multiple times this year then Mark Talia of course world breakout player of the year last year the slipperiest man in rugby union always covered in baby oil it was on form during the world cup and I think he's going to carry that over top five try scorers the both of them that's not too unrealistic five dollars really like that bet so hopefully a few of those tickle your fancy if they don't there's plenty of options in that super rugby futures market you can bet on your top try scoring hooker winger any position so make sure you check it out on the TAB app or website. NRL this week, of course, All-Stars game. Indigenous go in, $1.65 favourites. The Maldives at $2.15. My heart says back the Maldives. My head says the Indigenous get the win. So I'm just going to go with them at home in Townsville, 1-12 to at $3. Because I think it's going to be tight and there's some great value there. Then I've gone through and picked out four preseason games that I like the look of. I like the Roosters to cover the 18.5 point start against Manly. The Roosters, they've gone Rolls-Royce. Manly, they're resting rigs for Vegas, so I think the Roosters will put them away extremely easily by more than 18.5 points. I like the Warriors to beat the Tigers at $1.90. That is a head and a heart bet. I can't believe we're underdogs. Tigers at $1.83. Mentioned it's their Super Bowl, but I back us in Christchurch to get the win. Broncos to beat the Cowboys. They're only $1.17, but you could jump on them on the 14.5 point start. Broncos, they're going big. Cowboys 
Cowboys resting deluxe. And then finally, I like the Dolphins to cover the 14 and a half line against the Titans. They've rolled out Herbie, Flegler, Avarillo and Co. The Titans didn't recognize one name on that team sheet, so it could be a long day at the office for them. If you multi up those four options, you'll get $7.69, a nice number. Not sure if you can bet on try scorers too for this weekend. They weren't up at time of betting, but if you can, closer to kickoff, Warriors game. I really like the look of Setu too, and here's why. His name's Setu too. he's wearing jersey number two, so in my opinion, you've got to have him for two of the best meaties. Say, Lessy, Ray Arce. Then, for your basketball, Breakers, $1.41 against the Brisbane Bullets, who are sitting in ninth on the ladder. Abercrombie, farewell home game. You've got to get on that and snap up those odds. UFC, Volk head-to-head, Whitaker head-to-head. Tougher to get the dub. Multi them up. $5.65. Or you could juice it a little with tougher for the KO to really push the odds up. But my best bet for this week, and we're two from two on the potty so far, undefeated. You gotta love that. I've gone with Volk head to head at $1.80. Then for your Magic Multi of the Week, and unfortunately we're 0 from 2 on these, but again we lost last week by one leg. And if you saw the one leg that missed, it was Scotland to beat France in the Six Nations. They scored a try right on the hooter. It was given no try when it was clear the ball was on the ground. Bit of a robbery there. Almost tossed the TV out the lounge, but it is what it is. We're still back. You can never keep a good man down. So this week we're going Volk head to head, Breakers to win. Warriors to win $4.82 Get up you good thing And again, cheers to the TAB Right, that's us for this week's episode, Surly Talk Sports. Hope you enjoyed it. So much sport to sink the teeth into this weekend. So hopefully you can find something that tickles your fancy. It should all be televised as well. So sit yourself on the couch, crack open a better beer, get out the TAB app and rip in. I'm actually off to Sydney today, going to check things out across the ditch. Believe it or not, never been to Sydney. So excited to get over there. Was going to head along to that Bulldogs trial tonight to watch them take on the Storm. Josh Curry though he's playing indigenous so I won't head along probably instead just park up at a bar and rip into a couple Darren Froffiers but have a good weekend enjoy it enjoy all the sport and I'll catch you back here same time same place next week to chew the fat how good